G'day, welcome back to the channel. My name's Matt, but you will know me as WFX Malice. Today I'm bringing you a quick tutorial showing you how to use a little bit of basic HTML editing to do some secret squirrel hacker man type stuff to uh, get into parts of websites you probably normally wouldn't have access to. Let's get started. So yes, I've got out of the house now. They're uh, starting to lift the social distancing restrictions. I'm no longer a hermit. Um, went down, got a haircut, short back and sides, fresh fade. Um, looking a little bit like the burlacker here with this direct cutoff for the beard. Might try and fade that in a little bit more, but hey, look, I've got more style going on up here and my dad jokes are a hell of a lot funnier than his are, so beat that. A uh, bit of a precursor for today. We're not gonna be doing any illegal activity. Oh, no. um, I don't condone that sort of behavior. So if you're here to learn any black hat hacking or you wanna try and do any, some, any sort of illegal hacking, hit the road. Feel free to hit a dislike and throw me some salt down in the comments. Don't care, move on. Um, for those who do wanna use this for good, a little bit of white hat type hacking, hey, I'm all for it. Uh, we're going to be using the inspect element function. So we're going to be playing around with some HTML. We're not going to be doing any coding or any scripting. So you don't need any knowledge of HTML really. I'm going to show you everything you need to uh, sort of make your way through this. Um, ideally, we're going to be looking at how to access websites that restrict you from having an ad blocker. So they want you to turn the ad blocker on. So they, they want you to turn your ad blocker off rather so that you can get in there and make them some money on their ads. Um, which is great. Look, there's lots of small developers that I uh, do leave my ad blocker off for so that they do make the money off the ads popping up. I know they're like probably 0.1 of a cent these days. Um, but hey, look, every little bit counts. Um, they're doing some hard work, so that's a way of contributing. For these big mainstream places, they're making billions. I don't care about their ads. Turn them off. I don't want to see them. Uh, the other thing we're going to be looking at is how to access websites that perhaps the developers have put a frame over the top. Maybe they want you to create an account sometimes just to see the information behind. Um, sometimes the developers have put a block on the site because they're working on something else or maybe something's come up, I don't know. Uh, we're gonna be having a look at that. And I'm also gonna show you how an ad blocker works. Uh, essentially, it's just doing an automated process of what we're gonna be doing now. So I'm gonna go onto this website here. It is a local TV station, 7 Plus. Um, when you jump onto their website, it comes up with this. We can see using an ad blocker, disable it to continue. Now, I don't want to see their ads between all the shows, so I'm just going to right click on that and choose inspect element. We're going to have a look through the list of things we see here. Now, they've kept this one nice and easy. They've got div class equals ad block detect overlay. Sounds like what we want to get rid of. So sometimes you get a little bit of uh, filtering. Sometimes you got to right click and choose inspect element on a few other things, but we delete that, bang press play and we're now watching the video with our ad blocker on and we're not gonna see the ads at the start of the show and between the shows, um, we win. So the next website we're gonna to go to and have a look at is a Microsoft XML editor. Now this is a office deployment tool. Uh, once upon a time, Microsoft endorsed this because it stopped people from going on to uh, torrent websites to download copies of Office. So you have a key but you don't have the media. There's an office deployment tool that allows you to download it. However, you need to put the correct information in the XML for it to download. So this is a um, website that was put together on GitHub. Some clever developers come up with this and basically you could just choose your method of install, choose the product, choose the license type and bang it would download the media for you, install it and then you could apply your CD key afterwards. Microsoft since changed things. They want you now to sign onto a Microsoft account so that you can link your product key to your Microsoft account. And that way all you have to do is go onto your Microsoft account and you can download software that belongs to you. I refuse to link anything to a Microsoft account. I've lost too much software thanks to Microsoft's stupid licensing rules. Now, I do a lot of sandboxing, I do a lot of testing, I build servers all the time, and I like to change things around, different hypervisors and different ways of loading things in. So I'll often build a server, run it for six months, see how I like and go, I could do this a bit better. So I'll go and wipe it, reinstall it, change everything around, put all my uh, virtual machines in Hyper-V or put it in ESXi or whatever it be. Do that over a few times and then all of a sudden Microsoft will block your product key. They say you've activated it too many times, you've reached your limit. Apparently there's a limit on how many times you can activate a CD key. Um, I've rang Microsoft before. Once upon a time, early in the, in the piece, they used to go and unlock it for you and yet no worries. 
And the, the same thing would happen if you upgraded hardware. If you just moved from one computer to another or changed your CPU or changed your graphics card or changed your RAM, it detected that it was a new system and make you go and reactivate it again. And like I say, you hit these limits pretty easy. And look, if you follow Linus Tech Tips, he has the same issue. Um, yes, this is turning into a rant, but something I'm de I feel deeply about because I've lost a Microsoft Server 2012 Standard Edition CD key thanks to Microsoft thinking I am using my product incorrectly. No, I'm just sandbox testing to find out better ways of running things. And I've just recently done a rebuild of my system. So this is why I'm going through this now. Uh, so enough of my rant. If we go to the website, uh, it comes up with this alert. Microsoft releases new Office customization tools for the click to run. Obviously, they want you to log in and go through your Microsoft account. So we can't get rid of this thing. So we can right click on the page, inspect element, and you can see there's quite a few different parts here. And you sort of sometimes got a trial and error. And if you get it wrong, that's okay. You're not editing their website. You're editing your local version of the website. So you can always hit refresh if you've deleted too many things or deleted the wrong thing. Um, sometimes better off just to hide the element first and then go and delete it afterwards. But I've gotten through here. I've clicked on quite a few delete element and all of a sudden I can now access the website that I couldn't access before, just like that. Now I'm going to show you how an ad blocker works now. Uh, so we're just going to jump on to a speed test by Ookla and uh, I've just jumped into a uh, incognito mode so I'll throw some random ads here on the screen. Um, and here we can see, we right click on the ad, we've managed to get rid of the ad. Um, we right click on the next ad and we can see there we search up a few, a few, uh, search up a few div classes, and we can find here the ad. Now, this is what an ad blocker does: is it's programmed in all these typical names that Google have for their Google AdWords and other other ad catch sites, and it just automatically picks those up and automatically hides them or deletes them from your web browser, so you don't have to be bothered by them all the time. And of course. Websites get paid every time those ads load. If the ads aren't loading with the website, well, they don't get paid. And that's why they want you to turn off ad blocker on particular sites before you can use it. But anyway, hope this has helped you guys. Hope you've learned something. If I can expand on anything a little bit more here for you, I'd be happy to do so. Throw me a comment down below if you want to learn a little bit more about HTML. I used to do a, a lot of web building. Uh, used to uh, run my own web server, web hosting server. Uh, so I do have a bit of knowledge there. I'm definitely not expert level, but I uh, know my way around it. Like I say, I hope you've got something out of this. I hope you've liked it. If you have, hit the like button. Leave me some comments down below. And if you dislike it, I want to know. Leave some comments. Say, hey, you're wrong on this, or you don't know what you're talking about. Great. Let's get a conversation going. Happy to hear it. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next video.